Once again, welcome to the 85th episode of Chatting with Chook, shooting right of center. And my sound appears to be working on the soundbar, but let me know if you can hear me. We have Har Harvesting Southeast Alaska's here. Welcome. Lever Guns 50, King Outdoors, Nathan Manley. How are you guys doing tonight? It's uh, another freak weather uh, situation. I don't know if it's, it's the... Um, that tropical wind that comes up here, but uh, it was pushing 50 degrees today and all the snow is melting. People get upset about it too. I, I love it. I, I'm a fan of the uh, warm weather and global warming, whatever, um, because uh, it's just been nice, comfortable. People hate the ice. I'd rather have the rain and ice any day and the wind over snow i just I'm, I'm sick of snow it's fun sometimes but when you grow up in alaska and you've had brutal winters your whole life i'd, I'd rather just have warm weather so uh, another freakishly warm day in anchorage we got tristan hendrickson all right you can hear me george john smith is here Ethan manley can hear me king outdoors over guns raining here in southeast alaska big surprise yeah that's a ghost down there michael harnack is here got oh you got a muley very nice oh that, that's something i'd like to get someday I've, I've never got a mule deer you're interesting it's almost like uh, it's closer to uh the elk side of the family or something caribou they're just uh big old andy davis welcome snowing and 30 degrees in colorado go figure but I always think of mule deer as closer to the, the elk or caribou side of the deer family. Just really interesting how big they get and their antlers and everything. Uh, it looks like a neat animal. More and more reports of whitetails and, and uh, mule deer entering the uh, sort of the interior of Alaska, just kind of pushing over from Canada and British Columbia area. So... Hopefully they'll make their way here in greater numbers. I mean, it's going to be a long time before, but who knows? Maybe a lot of them are moving in. I am hearing, it's been happening for years, but I'm hearing more and more reports. Uh, speaking of, I I still think that I have a small chance of going to Kodiak, but it's pretty small. I'm definitely not going to Southeast Alaska like I've been planning to. Next year, I definitely will. Chuck said he'd come down with me next year too. Uh, go back down to Juneau or Sitka or somewhere and get some blacktail and late, late this time of year, you know, November. Uh, but yeah, it's not going to happen. But if I'm lucky, I'll get a weekend in Kodiak. But I, I found out that uh, the gun season, at least on the road system, is over in Kodiak because that's all I was planning on doing is hunting the road system. But now it's, uh, unless I bring my uh, bow over, um, but now it's muzzleloader or um, bow hunting only on the road system. But if you get a boat just to take you to some bay in Kodiak, you could still hunt deer with your rifle. So it could happen. I have some buddies in Homer every year. They'll take their boats all the way around uh, out in Cook Inlet, all the way to Kodiak to, to kill a bunch of Blacktail bucks, so maybe I'll, I, I don't think I'd have time for one of those trips, but it would be fun. Previous chat was really great. I enjoyed the first 23 minutes, totally. All those good decisions within two weeks. I recommend Sitka. Oh, I've heard such good things about Sitka. Trading the Savage 110, not buying that. POF, POS, POF Revolution. I intend to talk you out of it, not necessarily. Setting on the 308 as you choose on it. Yeah, that's still the plan. The guy is in town today. Maybe I'll text him here in a few like, hey, I'm ready to do the deal. Checking in from Calgary. Welcome. Thomas Pickering's here. Nathan Manley, how do you like your 6.5 Grendel? I'm going to be building one with the PSA lower I1. I'm oh, very nice. Ah, it's embarrassing, but I no longer have that Grendel. I, I traded that a while ago. I do like the round. I like Grendel, um, 6.5 Grendel. But um, 
It wasn't uh, that great of an Alaska round. Didn't make as much sense. It does in a way because it's uh, you know harder hitting than a five five six. Obviously, you can uh, you know the recoil is very minimal, and you can have it on that AR fifteen platform, um, and it would take large game, but uh, not quite as powerful as a Creedmoor, and the the two seventy is even more powerful powerful than a Creedmoor, as you guys will see on our. Chuck and I are going to have a good video this Saturday. We're each going to have part one and two of 270 versus uh, 65 cream more, except this time we actually went out and tested it. So that was a lot of fun. Alaska Ballistics is here. Speak of the devil. Did you get it? Yeah, yeah. Did you get your thing or is Chuck just lying? I remember he said he sent him out. 308 Winchester for the win, Michael Harnack says. I agree. Could have shot it with my 10 millimeter. Nice. It must have been close. Oh, harvesting Southeast Alaska is in Sitka. That's right. Dude, just bought my birthday present. Uh-oh. Oh, he got a ZT2, a ZT450 titanium. Let me look at that. I've seen some of their titanium offerings. Uh, ZT. I'm kind of a big fan of ZT now. I will show you guys my new ZT knife. Um... What did you call it? A four, 450 titanium. The price point on that is probably like 500 bucks or ten. ZT450 titanium. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, wow, oh, that's nice. What is the price on that? Oh, uh, titanium. See how much? Uh, 188 bucks on Blade HQ. Not bad. I'm really happy with ZT. Um, I've always liked them. I didn't know a lot about them until uh, a year or so ago when I started getting into knives. I hadn't heard of them. I can tell you that I'm a fan, though. Good evening. Trout Whisperer is here. Man, I feel like whispering to some trouts right now. I got the fishing bug. What's up, lever guns? Not yet. I'm out trucking right now. My next bug build will be a 25 SPC 4 degree improved, 25 GPC and 22 ultralight rifle. Interesting. Lever guns. Good to hear your voice. I need a, a polite gentleman knife. So how are all the standard deviations? Is the 6.5 Creedmoor much better based on three shots each through the chrono? Ah, uh, you'll have to wait and see. Chuck's the expert on all that stuff. It, there was uh, there was some advantages to the six five Creedmoor for the as far as the standard deviations. I think, but as far as taking down game, I think we both kind of agreed two seventies. But there there's uh, advantages to both calibers. I'm I'm always partial to to say Pat, real man of genius. Welcome. I called it a chook. Pat, Pat had a post, uh, he was talking about how lame the uh, commercialism and just uh, the whole Black Friday is ridiculous. He, he had a picture of a car like turning away from the ridiculous, frivolous spending of Black Friday. And I have to agree with him. It is we're in a consumerism. Consumer society gets kind of ridiculous. That being said, I, I do enjoy Black Friday when it comes to tactical and firearm things. And uh, this year, I'm probably just going to do the Olight deal. They announced that Olight deal. And um, you never have enough flashlights here in Alaska, it gets, especially in the wintertime. It's super handy. It gets so dark. Most of our time is spent in the dark. Um, I really like this. Uh, what is this? The SR2 baton? Yeah. 5-2-R, whatever. SR, S2R baton. Anyways, I, this this has done really well for me, but oh, it's messing up already. Sometimes you just got to, uh, probably needs to be charged. You just twist it off and on. But um, other than that, it's been really reliable. Um, and so for Black Friday, my plan is to order a bundle, just the, the two flashlight bundle you get from Olight. They they give you one of their nice baton ones. I might get it in different colors. Who knows? And then they give you one of their little flashlights with it. So it's discounted and you get a small, you know, get an extra flashlight. Never have enough flashlights. So anyways, that's the only uh, 
every year for a while we were going down to, uh, and I might just for fun go to Alaska Ammo because they have really good Black Friday deals. And then they have the $50 lower, stripped lowers. Usually it's usually a, a decent brand, not just Anderson, but they'll they'll have some strip lowers for 50 bucks. It's, a, it's kind of a good idea to get a couple of those just based on whatever the political political climate is at the time. So I may check check out them because it's it's worth it to go down Alaska Ammo and see what their Black Friday deals. But right now my only plan is to order one of those Olight bundles. Felton told me about it today. I was meaning to check check and see what they had. Trout was burnt, carrying a ZT0566 made from Elmax. Nice. Five shots. Yeah, we did five shots on each. Chuck uh, gave me that ammo, too. It might be in my bag, but uh, that was nice of Chuck. He gave me a couple boxes, 270, that he bought just for the uh, test. We need to make it out there and do more tests like that. Does anyone shoot 7 mil anywhere? A lot, tons of people up here do. A lot of people hunt with 7, seven millimeter mag. Uh, Chuck does, for sure. He takes game every year with his, his 7 mag. Um, the AR-15 platform is pretty nice for the ability to change out the parts with these, but I'm more into the Comblock firearm. 7.62.39 can be ran to similar power of a 30.30. No one doubts it. Uh, the the 7.62 by 39 is pretty good close up range for hunting um, game. Definitely better than the 5.56, I would say. So the AK platform is awesome. Uh, it's perfect for Alaska because it's so reliable. Uh, I would have to agree with you. Um, I'm more partial to 308. Uh, I'll reach out a little longer, or well, a lot longer than a, the 7.62 by 39. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be hunting with. But yeah, then no doubt about it. The AR5, the AK47 platform is great for uh, hunting in Alaska, I think. And uh, my plan is in early spring to get a PSL, which is, of course, the 54 rim. Uh, cartridge and uh, I'd like to do some hunting with that but we'll see um, we'd rather get some tires and rims for my new truck which we will talk about itchy ass stinky here what's everybody it's and Andrew Smith oh, okay change the name trout that 556 is nice also thanks Michael let me catch up it worked well so far any Black Friday deals on Cerakote jobs you know what uh, they usually, you can usually find one. I don't know about locally. Uh, there's a few, uh, there's a guy in Eagle River that does it, a guy in Meadow Lakes. Um, I don't know if they're having Black Friday sales, but. I am game now that the ATV tour season is over. I thought it hasn't even started yet. Jay Moore, seven room in mag. Just shot a nice white tail bunk this morning with my Tika T3 and 7mm red mag. Very nice. I'll be taking my 7mm mag for my float hunt next fall. Grizzly Crazy, welcome. Pensive. It's always good to have some extra AR parts around with all these boating accidents. Yeah, that's right. I'm always losing stuff. William Keller, welcome. Ah, William reminds I still need to send out. There's a uh, four page. Uh, there's four of you patrons that I got packages coming. I'll try to get to that. Uh, yeah, you always get behind on that. Depends of those darn boats. I have a Weatherby Vanguard and take a T3 Superlight 7 memory regular Magnum. What truck talk? I just ordered a Rossi 92 357 mag lever gun. Nice. Actually, I have to admit the 6.5 millimeter 264 is much larger and better variety of bolts, particularly match. Yeah, it's, you, that's true. And that's what. Uh, I was telling Chuck, is he, he, yeah, I wish they made uh, the 270 in different barrel lengths with different twists. They do, but it's usually one twist rate. Um, and then they, I wish they'd made more ammo, match ammo, and different kinds of long range ammo for it. But uh, you won't find a big a variety as you will in the Creedmoor. I'm, I'm debating doing a rifle build, hunt, kill, cook video series. Nice. The Cerakote and. Uh, yeah, the guy he changed his name to like Gun God Automobile Guns and God or something, but it's the uh, the main guy in Eagle River. He's like a gunsmith. He does a lot of Cerakote. Does a pretty good job. 
on my second deer tag, I'm going to try to find one more buck to knock tomorrow. But if not, going to kill a doe and make some jerky chook. I'll send it up. Very nice. Trump 2020. Is Cerakote good for blued barrels? And is it heavy? I don't think it adds too much weight to a rifle. I've never researched that. Um, and a nice classic gun, I just prefer the blued barrel. Um, but yeah, you can, I don't know if you have to strip it off. I think you can just Cerakote over a blued barrel. Do, correct me if I'm wrong, but if it's a classic like uh, Winchester or something, I'd just keep it blued and then put some... Uh, Oh, what did what does Chuck have on that? That guy put like three or four layers of car wax, turtle wax on uh, that 338 that I traded to Chuck, and um, that thing is waterproof and it's still got the beautiful blue. Uh, I would just do that and and forget about the Cerakote. Um, so you're going to be in major rainstorms. Still have my 280 Remington since I was 12 year old. Nice. 270s Niet rifle is fine. Oh man. Does anyone else feel the very strong need to have more than one rifle and handgun for each caliber? Especially rifle. I just bought another 25-06. Oh, man. Welcome to the club. Welcome to my world. I have a Remington 700 that I bought really cheap and had it Cerakote. I didn't notice a weight change. My favorite gun I always like is my Winchester Model 70 Featherweight. And two. Yeah, that's kind of that's a classic. That's kind of my favorite, too, to Sony. I agree. If you've got a pre-64... Model 70, don't Cerakote it. Just, you know, put some protectant on it if you want. Simply put, bluing is an acid rust to the metal, so standard oxidation is reduced slowed. Cerakote is not going to add weight. Interesting. And these nuts, visions here from Fairbanks. Welcome. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, we're rolling the dice. 500 for the Rossi 92 357 mag, 16-inch long. Chuck just got a new 357. I have multiple 7 millimeters, 270s, 3 out 6s. Nice. Chuk, what is your rationale behind getting an AR-10 for hunting? A very heavy gas-operated semi-automatic with a short barrel, a light bolt-action 308 would make much more sense, in my opinion. You're probably right. Um, I should get, I, I like that, uh, what is it, that police Remington 700. I've had a couple of them, the A700 AA... SD, AAC, SD, or whatever, the police tactical with the short bull barrel. Maybe I should just get one of those and, and get a decent hunting stock for it. But I, I really like the, the semi-auto aspect of the AR-10. Uh, there's something about it that appeals to me. I've hunted with the AR-10 before in large game, and I just like it. I don't know why. It would make more sense to have the bolt action, though. You're right. The feeling that it will end up like your savage, too heavy to be taken to hunt. Yeah, you're probably right. The heart wants what the heart wants, though. What what can I say? Flying down to your neck of the woods tonight just for one day, unfortunately. I'll stop by Alaska Ammo. Oh, you already got Alaska Ammo up there. Never mind. They have a Cerakote color that matches bluing. It just isn't shiny. Interesting. I have a couple of pre-64s. Yeah, that's one of the most beautiful, I think. Alan Debu, Welcome. Now, Chuck's under Boss Custom Music, right? And Chuk has no rationale for anything he gets. I told you, Chuck, the heart wants what the heart wants. William Keller, my wife's older, no safety. Rossi is beautiful and fully functional. I've always liked Rossi's. I'm not sure whether to Cerakote my Tika T3 7mm barrel because it's blue and nice wood stock, but one that lasts forever. Been loading up on ammo with the Democrats bullshit. I need to get some ammo, too. Hey, Chuk, watching from Philly. Brian Nasarenko's here. My stepmom hunts elk in Oregon with custom-built LR38 AR-10. All right, before it's too late, uh, I do want to show you guys my new uh, ZT knife. This is the O223. Now, this knife, uh, a couple years ago, it was the flagship of, of course I do that, of ZT. Um and uh, it was hated. It was widely hated. And I don't know why, because I have wanted it ever since I saw it. I, th I thought it was a great idea to pay homage to K-Bar in a flipping folder knife. Eh, it's a flipper. It's kind of cheesy. I like flipper, though. It's fun. Uh, but anyways, I got this from EDC Alaska. Juan hooked me up. I told him I wanted it. You know, I could have ordered it from Blade HQ or whatever. 
Amazon, but I like, you know, helping out Juan. Uh, so he ordered it for me, gave me a really good deal. As you can see, it's a flipper. Uh, but as you can see, it's got the handle and the shape of the blade there. Uh, they've emulated a K-Bar uh, military fighting knife. And, and that, that was what the appeal to me was. So this is my new knife. Uh, these run for about 300 bucks. So uh, I know I have some friends that would have a conniption fit saying that it's not worth it. But to me, it absolutely is. If, if you're just cutting boxes, get a cheap $40 pocket knife. And that's fine. But you feel uh, it come really sharp out of the box. Uh, really beefy handle. Uh, there's no wiggle in it. Um, just the, everything feels great. The fit and finish feels great, but, uh, you notice such a difference with a quality knife like that. So I'm, I'm a fan of ZT now. So I am very happy with that knife. That's, I've been carrying a Spyderco police for almost a decade now. Uh, mainly, I've, you know, I there was a bench made for a while and so, but I've had that Spyderco police for 10 years now. And it, I've carried that more than anything else. And I still love uh, the Spyderco Police line. I have a couple of them. But uh, with the beefier handle, uh, I have to say this is my new everyday carry. I, this just feels great. Uh, it's got this jipping at the top you can kind of put your thumb on. Uh, I like everything about the feel of this knife uh, to the point where I've uh, replaced my Spyderco Police uh, with the ZT knife. So I'm probably going to get another ZT knife at, at, at 300 bucks for a flying knife. Uh, I'm leaving for Eastern Montana in three days. Cruising crazy. Oh, cruising. Leah Leah is here. Um, I had lunch with him the other day. He's, he lives down in Southeast Alaska too, but check out his channel. If you can, we're going to do, uh, some kind of collaboration at some point. Uh, but that was cool meeting that guy. I took my 280 on a white-tailed deer hunt in Montana. Very nice. Oh, God, now what's Chuck saying? The heart wants what the heart wants, like ditching your bear hunting buddy to go to Peru's the broth holsification. I'm seriously trying to get a bride, and I have a bride now, Chuck. So um, Chuck just wants to shame me. Um, I'll never forget when... Uh, He's not even happy for me. I told Chuck that I, I was getting married to my bride in Asia and that I had bought, uh, you know, I'm going to get a, a wedding ring, an engagement ring from Walmart. And he just started laughing at me. It shows you what kind of person he is. He doesn't care about my feelings. He just wants to shame me for being poor. My stepmom hunts elk in Oregon with a custom built. Oh, okay, I read that. That's, see, yeah, I think hunting with the... I just like AR-10s. I really like them. I uh, haven't been on channel. Have you killed anything last few months? No, I haven't killed anything. I wanted to go deer hunting soon. The last thing I killed was a crane, and that was, geez, almost three months. That was during, still is technically duck season, and there was a lot of duck hunting. I've been so busy, I, w I haven't been able to go out. But, yeah, the crane was the last thing I killed probably six weeks ago. Unfortunately, Joshua Spencer made it. Welcome. I wish Winchester was still American made. I'd spend the money, but as long as Rossi works, I'll be happy. Uh, let's see. Sorry. I took my 280 on a white tail deer in Montana. Uh, check out cruising Leah Leah if you can. You banned my account for trolling some libtards. Did I? No, it's just the. Uh, I don't think I did. I'm leaving for Eastern Montana in three days. That is nice. 300 bucks for flying knife. Joe Rogan wants you to do his podcast. Drew keeps talking about you. Can't. <laughs> awesome. I want to be on Joe Rogan. I want... Uh, let's see. I keep losing everything. I want one loves ET. Yeah, they're nice. Pretty sweet knife. I'll go with your hoodie. Joke it just messing with you. Benchmade are common. Yeah, I don't buy Benchmade anymore. Joshua Spencer likes the knife. Epstein's going to be on Joe Rogan podcast the same day. Just saw alert. Too late to chat. I saw a Toyo and I had to see. Oh, Tommy Guns. Yeah, so I did get a thanks to you guys. I still like Jeep, and I think it would be. I, I kind of agree with some people that 
you know, if you can afford it, have just a hunting Jeep that's, you know, barely road legal, um, that you can use as a four wheeler, like a little Wrangler that's just all jacked up. I think that'd be awesome for hunting. Uh, but I ended up getting an older Toyota Tacoma and I, I could not be happier with it. I, we already took it out. And, uh, when we filmed our, our, uh, shooting video the other day, our test, and we were rallying around in it and it plowing through snow. Anyways, uh, very happy with the Toyota Tacoma. I, I'm, this summer I'll do some videos on kind of truck camping and, and just going on the back roads and outdoor adventures in the truck. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of explore that. Pretty sweet knife. I'll go with your hoodie. Benjamin or Connors. Uh, let's see. I love my buck knife. Buck, nothing wrong with a buck knife. I love the K-Bar. My grandma gave me his back in the day. A knife could do anything. I like K-Bars too. You buying a wife? No, I've, I've got a bride uh, that I'll be meeting soon. I need... A good EDC and 188 for the ZT450 from Great Northern Knives here in Wasilla was awesome. 188, that is a good price for a ZT. And then you ditch that girl. No, nope, not this time, Chuck. Um, I need a wife. I need to settle down. I'm not going to join the Space Force. I've decided though. Screw that. That would be miserable. Walmart. Yeah, I'm going to get my engagement ring from Walmart. Did you get a Filipino? Yeah, I have a Filipino bride uh, right now. Uh, we're not married yet. Uh, let's see. Oh, God, here it comes. Buy the hottest one and make sure she sucks me. <laughs> Buy two wives that are husband. <laughs> you guys, just make sure that the new Yoda is a TRD off-road instead of the engagement ring. How did you know it is a TRD? No, he didn't get a bride. He has a new girlfriend. Yeah, just a new girlfriend. We're not married yet. Have you thought about keeping ducks, turkey around the house? Would spare the wild mellers a lot of stress near you. Yeah, a lot of stress from sky busting. Toya is better than Shady G. Ah, I got it. Harvesting Southeast. AK, everyone hates on communists, but yet they see my commie guns that always ask if I can help them build one. Sheepman, thank you for the uh, super chat in uh australian money i believe thank you welcome sheepman 220 always reminds me of the sig p220 to to toyota will only be shit if it would have up here in alaska can't go wrong with the toyota i'm very happy with it it just uh and a little better gas mileage than i would have uh got on one of those older wranglers for sure like i'm i might be getting 21 miles per gallon on the highway um uh, Probably less than that with uh, tires and stuff, especially that I'm planning on getting. I, I'm probably going to get uh, rims and tires before I get a PSL, unfortunately. But the PSL isn't a need. That would just be like a fun rifle to hunt with. I already have some rifles that I'll be hunting with. Toyota is so sad. So much for America. Is it electric or run on old grease? Yeah, that's the only thing. Now, they, they do make them in, in America, some of the plants, but... I just couldn't get myself to get a Ford. I, although some of those F-150s people were talking about, the price is right on them. I wouldn't mind uh, an F-150 depending on the deal. A big fan of Cold Steel. Been carrying that one I showed you for 20. Yeah, the Voyager. That was a nice knife. Uh, I had it super sharp too. Cruising Leo Leo has got a uh, Cold Steel Voyager Tanto folder uh, that he made not out of paracord but out of like fisherman's style paracord um and he had it like in his vest pocket with the lanyard coming out of it and then the lanyard was in his uh buttonhole of his vest and uh it was like one of the coolest things i ever seen like a fisherman's uh setup a little cold steel knife on a lanyard so i thought that was pretty cool i'm really into knives and i hadn't seen anything like that before it was pretty cool i have a ram 2500 grizzly crazy says off-road or sport? Uh, I think it's the off-road. It's a 4x4 TRD uh, 2008 Tacoma. Um, I think it's off-road. Tommy me guns. Toyotas are more recommended than Chevy or Ford these days. Yeah, you could argue that. I've had three Tacomas. Great, great vehicles. Yeah, the Tacos. Uh, pretty, pretty happy. It's, uh, it's 2008. 
of a power wagon myself. Love it. Crazy, crazy. Oh, okay. So you've got the Ram 2500. Yeah, I like uh, Michael Kaler's truck. I had a T100 with 686,000 miles when I sold it years ago. And I still see him driving around. Around brand new truck when I sold it. 3.4 motor, same 90s and 2000 Tacomas. Interesting. Yeah, it's a 2008. I'm very happy with it, though. So I'm gonna be, I'll be doing some, a little bit of mods. Uh, there's a place in Wasilla that sells light bars, super bright light bars for. Uh, uh, they actually sell them to fire fighting people, like firefighters and their trucks and stuff. But I'm gonna get one of those. Um, 6400 lumens. It's gonna be pretty cool. Have a little light bar on there, and then I'll just get uh, wheels and rims, and then maybe one of those little. Oh, what do you call it? The little filter that comes off the side there. A little snorkel. The snorkel. And that'll be it. I, I won't need anything else. It's, it's already pretty much set. We never use Toyotas in any, any wars, but Jeeps World Wars change things. Yeah, that's a point. I had a Nissan Titan that was built in Tennessee and a Tundra that was built in Indiana. Interesting. IASC. I'd rather go into Asia than Mars. Tacoma's hold their value unlike Chevy and Ford. Yeah, you might be right. I have a Dodge work truck, 2,500, made in Mexico, and it's a piece of shit. Same as Dakota, I have too. I had a Dakota too, itchy ass, sinky figure saying. I had a Dakota too, and it, it was fun. I, I did take it on some hunts, but it, of course it just broke down to the point where I just, it just had to get rid of it. That's another midsize truck that was fun, but uh, I'd rather have a... a Tacoma than a Dakota, that's for sure. Dumpster fire started. Tommy Guns is saying. At Tommy Guns, I've heard several soldiers use a version of the diesel Tacoma that you can get overseas. Yeah, and in the Middle East, uh, they drive those Tacomas. And then the, you'll see the soldiers buying them here um, when they get back. And that was kind of cool, too, because I mentioned, uh, even though everybody has the Dodge Chargers on base, that there's a bunch of people dry, driving Wranglers on base. But on base, when I go out to my car, there were so many Tacomas and Toyota trucks that it's hard for me to even find my truck. It's the same models and everything. So uh, it's popular. Hilux, LW is here. Oh, the Hilux. That must be those, those diesel Tacomas he's talking about. Isis and the Taliban mounted PSL on top of Toyotas. Yeah, I've seen pictures of that. My Tundra is a 2008 Toyota Mexico. Ah, I agree. I'm very happy with it. Very happy with it. Let's see. I'm behind on the... I have an eight-foot bed with my 6.4 Hemi, 420 HP. Very nice. Greenleaf Fabrication out of Wasilla. They are Toyota Grooves. Greenleaf Fabrication. Ah, I'm going to have to write that down because I know... Uh, Alyeska tire or whatever out there is really good. And I'm a fan of Muffler City. That's what I was planning on going to for the wheels and stuff. But I have not heard. I'm going to write that down. Green leaf fabrication. I'm going to make a note of that. Uh, because there are certain rims that do not work good for Alaska. And like those Alyeska tire guys will tell you which ones. Alaska is really rough on rims. And some will just get beat up and bent. Um, and they'll tell you which ones are good because there's certain brands that weren't. Green Tree. Oh, okay. Green Tree, not Green Leaf. Okay. I'm going to write that down. Green Tree. I have heard of Green Tree. Uh, so I'll have to compare them to Alaska Tire. Muffler City. I bought some tires and rims on them. I like them too. Oh, God. Chuck has got a super chat so he can say something mean. Uh, buy your wife a Walmart ring. You've already shamed me for that, Chuck. You've already shamed me for uh, buying my wife a Walmart ring. You better get your cardio respiratory system in top shape if you have a Philippine where they only build super freaks on the Philippines. Uh, one I did, I tried to turn my ticker in a Class A explosive device. For my dad, I had a 6.4 power wagon that blew up a few months ago at 93,000 miles, and Dodge refused to fix it. Yeah, go figure. Hilux, I think that's the uh, name of the those Toyota trucks that the contractors drive over there. Do a bumper mounted light bar instead of roof mounted because of the reflection off the hood. It's better location for snow and fog. 
Um, Nathan Manley saying that thankfully I already have one of those big steel tubular bumper deals. Um, so depending, I could mount it on that and it might just be mounted in the grill too, but we'll see. They have some diesel forerunners from Australia here for sale local, 1990s and want like 25K. Very nice. Buy those little mini Suzuki or Honda trucks, mini three cylinder four by four. They're cheap and go anywhere. I have seen those uh, little Suzuki's go do really good four wheeling. If you ask for a diesel runner, the Aussie ones. Oh, Michael Kaler's been to, he's been to uh, Australia. That's what he's asking about that. Buy a Honda Ecti truck for hunting. I bet the Alaska being so close. Yeah, maybe. Apparently the the drive Toyota in Alaska too, not just overseas. Yeah, tons of people drive them up here. Buy our quarter machine rent. Give her a new ring pop every day. Get a eight hundred pound warm winch. Oh, winch would be cool. That would be cool. Warren winch. No hate on the Asian wife joke. I almost got one. I know the feeling. Somehow a friend of mine who I've known since child decided she loved me and kind of stole me my good luck. What's a gallon of gas go for? Up here, it's not that bad right now. I don't know what the gallon is. Three something. Three bucks and change for a gallon of gas right now. Two fifty ish in New York State. Yeah, it's not that cheap. Should go buy the new Suzuki Jimmy in the US. They don't sell it here. Wow, I'm actually caught up on all everything. What else was I was talking about? Oh, that's all I was talking about. Toyota trucks and ZT knives. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the truck. I thought about getting one of those tent top campers, but the real nice ones are thousands and uh, it wouldn't be worth it. Eventually I need to get a shell for it. And then uh, I'm just going to get the, the trucker, snow trucker uh, tarp tent with a wood stove that my buddy has and uh, just go around and make a little off-road uh and boy, that's cheap compared to like drop-off hunts. You just go on an off-road, set up your tarp tent with the wood stove in the fall. So comfortable, really nice, and then just make that your base for hunting. Um, so I'm excited about that. They don't sell Suzuki's in America anymore. I love the old Samurais. Those are hunting rigs. 305-487. 585 if you don't live in Los Angeles. Yeah, that's true. Out in the villages, especially even more. Gas is 211 here right now. Wow. 20 miles away, it's 305. 590 at Barrow AK. Oh man, that's ridiculous. As any of these guys get taken. And $10 for a gallon of milk, $10 for a loaf of bread. Yeah, that's ridiculous. 590 is a crown. It is. Uh, I'm going to have to get out of here. I got some stuff to do and I need to catch up on my sleep. I like your truth, but Anchorage doesn't count as Alaska. It doesn't. It's just like uh, Seattle takes over Washington State or New York City takes over New York State. There's too many progressives here now. But anyways, I appreciate Anchorage, a half hour from Alaska in every direction. 329 and Homer at Chevron. Not bad. All right, guys, uh, be sure to tune in Saturday for our spectacular two-part series on Chuck and my channel of the 6.5 Creedmoor versus the 270 Winchester. And as always, thank you for stopping by, and I will see you guys